good morning students welcome to the subject of business policy and strategy we are dealing with our fifth unit that is the strategic framework right and we are in the topic of portfolio analysis portfolio analysis and the different tools of portfolio analysis is the topic that we are discussing since last 3 uh, 4 uh, lectures 3 lectures at least right let us uh, just derive or let us just conclude what is portfolio analysis portfolio analysis is one it's a kind of tool tool adopted by the companies why it is adopted so that management can identify and evaluate various businesses so that they can decide at the end that if multiple products or multiple businesses are taken up which one which one business or which business is productive which business is giving you the returns where the what kind of strategy can be used whether to invest whether to invest less or whether to divest that comes to um, or that decision can be taken with the help of portfolio analysis and that is what we have learned in the previous sessions right when any company wants to take up with the portfolio analysis there are various techniques available as you can see it here the seven techniques that has been mentioned here right uh, as far as the first six techniques are concerned we have already dealt with the six techniques which includes bcg technique ge product market evaluation matrix experience curve dpm that is known as directional policy matrix uh, life cycle portfolio matrix and today in today's session we'll be discussing the grand strategy selection matrix right uh, in short what we need to understand is that with the usage of these techniques as they all are considered to be the portfolio analysis techniques with the help of this technique one can decide or a company can decide as to which uh strategy can be selected or uh, what can a company do further to make the investment most fruitful right and for that pur purpose the portfolio analysis is done here we are going to learn the last technique uh, that is considered to be the grand strategy selection matrix let us see what is this technique all about the grand strategy uh, matrix has become a popular tool for formulating feasible strategies along with the swot analysis or bcg matrix the grand strategy matrix is such a kind of instrument for creating alternative and different strategies for the organization all the companies and divisions can be positioned how this technique is used then all the companies or the divisions or sbus can be positions in positioned in one of the grand matrix uh strategy quadrants there are four quadrants available in the grand strategy and out of these four quadrant the four uh, each one of them have their own uh, specific features and if the sbu or maybe the um, division or companies fall in any of this quadrant then it can be placed there and then accordingly the strategies uh, uh, can be suggested or strategies can be then adopted so the grand strategy matrix is based on two dimension the one is that of the competitive position of the company and what is the market share so under these two dimensions or uh, the company evaluates uh, the different uh, sbus or maybe the uh, product or businesses on the basis of these two say parameters that is considering the competitive position and considering the market growth and how these matrix works and where the company can be uh, there or placed or positioned in which quadrant depending upon that then the further decisions can be taken up so data needed for positioning sbus in the matrix is derived from the portfolio analysis see now as you can see it in the figure here there are four quadrants that are available here right as we can see it uh, number 1 2 3 4 quadrants are there on the screen right now right uh, again if you start positioning it in the anti clock direction then it is like quadrant 1 to your extreme right top right then comes up 2 3 and 4 likewise if you can see it on the Uh, uh the things on the outside of the quadrant we can see that the right extreme right side shows the strong competitive position the top shows the rapid market growth at the left side we can see the weak competitive position and at the bottom it can be the slow market growth in in fact the two uh, things uh, are clear two dimensions are clear that is slow market growth rapid market growth right that can be shown on the uh, vertical surfaces whereas the 
uh, the weak competitive position and the strong competitive position can be derived on the other side right so here with the help of the quadrant and if you see it inside the quadrant we can see that what will be the features of the first quadrant so if it is market development market penetration product development likewise features are available or these kind of strategies can be adopted now where these or what these uh, quadrant one suggests let us see that is the quadrant one is such a kind of quadrant or is such a kind of uh, uh, say uh, the place wherein you have a strong competition and rapid market growth if you see it here we can derive that see on the uh, right side there is strong competitive position available right and there is a rapid market growth also which can be seen with the measurement given inside the four quadrants right so it is uh, the featuring or in quadrant one is featuring these many types of uh, features like strong competitive position and rapid market growth so the company's product or the um, uh, say the business which is having strong competitive position and is also uh, being uh, um, accompanied by the rapid market growth then the, the company can be placed in this quadrant and what the firm needs to do so firms located in quadrant one of grant strategy matrix are in an excellent strategic position why because everything is strong if they are also good with the competition position or competitive position they are already doing well as far as the competition is concerned and there is even the rapid market growth so it can be considered to be the excellent or one of the best position that any firm can ever have in its life cycle right the first quadrant refers to the firms or divisions with a strong competitive base and operating in the fast moving growth markets such firms or such divisions are better to adopt and pursue such strategies like market development market penetration product development etc because it is having a strong market position uh, or strong competitive position as well as it is having a good market share right they can take up with such strategies like they can come up with the market development they can uh, even penetrate the market with the uh, product development and penetrating price like and can uh, skin the cream out of the market right the idea behind is to focus and make the current competitive base stronger naturally you can take the advantage of the strong competitive base that you have right now and that current uh, competitive base can be made even stronger by focusing more on this portion right the uh, in case such firms possess readily available resources they can move it uh, move on to the integration strategies but should never be at the cost of diverting attention from their current strong competitive base uh, definitely the strategies that can be suggested here are that if the readily available resources are there then we can go for the integration uh, strategies what is integration strategy if you remember it was horizontal integration considering the word backward and forward integration right integration means either you are taking up with the raw materials towards the backward side and you are even taking up with the supply chain towards the customers right whatever is possible and wherever you can take up as the advantage that can be used here but the focus should be there that the current position should not be shaken that means not at the cost of the current position what is the current position my new current position is telling us about the strong competition uh, or strong competitive base as well as having a very uh, high market share so both the things should not be disturbed at the same time such uh, strategies can be taken up which can help you out to take the advantage of the present situation so that is what is suggested in the quadrant one of the grant strategy matrix right if we move towards quadrant two two towards the anti-clockwise direction towards the uh, left side right we can see it now which is this quadrant two now what that specifically tells us there is a weak competitive position and there is but there is a rapid market growth right big competitive position is there it's not as strong as quadrant one but there is rapid market growth now firms that are positioned in this two quadrant that needs to evaluate their present approach to make the market place serious that means although their industry is growing they are un they are unable to compete the compete effectively and they need to determine why the firm's current approach is not able to produce the intended effect and how the company can best change to improve its competitiveness that means here the analysis should be there that in though the industry is growing 
right why they are unable to meet uh, uh, the uh, competition or they are not effectively meeting the competition then such kind of changes should be made so that it improves the competitiveness of the firm the suitable strategies for such firms are to develop the product market and to penetrate into the markets that means the suitable strategies can be made related to this aspects that means we can develop more uh, number of products or maybe the product which is already existing few modifications can be there and it can be uh, uh, floated into the markets right uh, even the market penetration can be a better option which makes the competitive strength of the firm the suitable strategies for such firms are to develop the product as i said because number two quadrant firms are in a rapid market growth industry an intensive strategy is usually the first option that can be adopted right so uh, intensive strategy means aggressive strategy if used then the um, Um, competitive strength will increase or that means you will be at a better competition competitors straight and at the same time as you are having a rapid market growth uh, you may not be bargaining with the profit so if aggressive strategies are there or intensive strategies are used it can be the most suitable one to achieve the competitive advantage or becoming a market leader quadrant two firms can go into horizontal integration subjective to availability of the resources right whatever the resources are available again the horizontal integration can be taken up so that the firms are taking up with the intensive strategy and increasing their competitive advantage however if these firms foresee a tough competitive environment and faster market growth then the growth of the firm the better option is to go into the divestiture or of some divisions or liquidation altogether and change the business very important is this that if the the company sees or if the management sees that though the rapid market growth is there but the competition is too tough to handle then the wise decision is to withdraw the uh, investment and to divert that investment somewhere else to liquidate it and um, altogether maybe a change of the business can be taken up because if you keep on taking the risk the market share which is rapid right now which looks rapid right now may not turn up to be the same for the future right so so they, those kind of strategies can be selected coming up to quadrant number 3 that is the bottom left that is considered to be the quadrant number 3 as you can see it right now right and the uh, strategies are also suggested in the quadrant number 3 but what is this quadrant number 3 specified with this is characterized by weak competition for competitive position and slow market growth see the competition is also weak and the growth of uh, in the market is also slow comparatively now the firms fall in this quadrant compete in slow growth industries and have big competitive position these firms must make some drastic changes so that quickly they can avoid uh, the further um, demise and possible liquidation what the company should do they should make any um, and such kind of drastic changes which uh, which helps them to quickly recover right and they can help to have uh, avoid uh, say further demise demise means uh, say complete uh, uh, say uh, the clash of the of the company or maybe a complete um, complete fall down of the company can be avoided and possible liquidation can also be avoided right so extensive cost and asset reduction that is retrenchment should be pursued first Uh, cost should be reduced somewhere and asset reduction through reten retention retrenchment should be there so that uh, the overheads can be uh, controlled and can be reduced an alternative strategy is to shift the resources away from the current business into different areas this is always the option available to the companies if or um, else if the company fails the uh, final option of quadrant three businesses are divestiture and liquidation right if nothing can work out here then the a uh, divestiture or maybe the liquidation is the last option so that you can recover whatever the amount can be recovered from the assets by liquidating it and then ultimately you can uh, take it to some other field of investment so that is all about quadrant number 3 which which is characterized by weak competitive position and slow market growth we are moving towards the last quadrant which is telling you about the strong competition position or competitive position but there is slow market growth right uh, these quadrant falls into the right side bottom 
right so what is this quadrant all about then this quadrant or the, the business falling in this quadrant have a strong competitive position but are in slow growth as far as industrial growth or market share is concerned so the firms are better to go into a related and unrelated integration in order to create a vast market for the products and services the competitive base is strong that means the competitive position of the firm is strong but the, there is a very slow market growth now how that market growth can be increased with the help of the related or unrelated integration right the vast market then of the product and services that can be covered these firms have the strength to launch diversified programs into more promising growth areas thus quadrant 4 firms have character uh, characteristically high cash flow levels and limited internal growth needs and often can pursue concentrated horizontal conglomerate or diversification successfully that means here the strategies have been suggested that uh, horizontal or conglomerate diversification or maybe concentric diversification can be uh, successfully used as the strategy to bring the firms out of this particular situation quadrant 4 firms also may pursue with the joint ventures they can join hands with somebody else because they are having a strong competitive position yes that can be a better option with which they can take up uh, the advantage of the strong competitive position and then they can increase the rapid market growth right coming up to the next portion there or next point there generally strategies listed in the first quadrant of the grand strategy matrix are intended to maintain a firm's competitive edge and boost the rapid growth while the other three quadrants represent appropriate actions to take to reach the best position which is the uh, first quadrant is enjoying increasing market share expanding to the new markets and creating new products are the common strategies suggested that means in the grand matrix uh, or in the grand strategy matrix we can see that quadrant number 1 it can be considered as the strongest quadrant and the business falling in this category are considered to be the best right and what should be done there then the maintaining of the position as far as the rapid growth is concerned and the strong competition competitive position is concerned can be maintained through various policies other than that 2 3 and 4 there the more focus should be there and such strategies can be used which helps us to have the rapid uh, growth as well as strong competitive position right so this is how the ground met the uh, grand matrix uh, uh, strategy can be used or matrix can be used wherein you can what what is the best purpose that we can take up this grand matrix as the base we can uh, make the uh, position of the different uh, business into this different quadrant and depending upon the position of the quadrant whether it is in one two three or four depending upon them uh, that particular position in which it is there then the strategies related can be suggested and the business can be brought from say slow market growth to uh, rapid market growth or from weak uh, say competitive position to strong market uh, marketing position so this is how our competitive position this is how these grand matrix helps us to uh, suggest the companies with the various strategies so with this grand strat uh, matrix we are coming an end to uh, the portfolio techniques portfolio analysis techniques what we are going to do is the last part of this particular unit and last part of your syllabus 2 that is we are going to take up the considerations or factors they which can be considered as behavioral factors affecting the strategy see there are so many uh, strategies that we have seen we have seen uh, uh, how these strategies can be made to use but there are so many factors also which should be considered by the companies by the uh, management of the company so that uh, all the factors affecting the choice of the strategy can be cleared out can be analyzed properly and then the strategy can be selected because strategy as we know is irreversible process and once you make or once you implement the strategy it takes up lot of resources lot of time and energy of the company so every now and then we cannot shift the strategy instead while selecting or before selecting the strategy if proper uh, factors uh, examination is done then we can uh, select or we can have the option of selecting the correct strategy so that is how we are going to see few behavioral factors which affects the choice of the strategy that means when you are selecting the strategy 
or before selecting the strategy we may consider this uh, factors and then we can take up the decision related to strategy so for every business unit it becomes almost compulsory to design such strategy which can best suit the organization for the success and long term growth there are various tools available to guide the management for deciding their own strategies considering their requirement and matching the internal and the external environment which affects the business so there are various factors also to be considered before it selects the proper strategy tool thus to gain the desired results the management needs to focus on the following factors that means if you want to take up with the strategy and if you want to make the strategy the best right before doing that what one must do is they can select the or they can uh, read and examine and analyze few factors which are relative while <coughs> making the decision related to strategy supposingly number 1 it is a role of current strategy what the current strategy is all about how much effective it is and if it is effective enough and if it is working good then the new strategy can be aligned with it that is what is the factor right so the current strategy is to be examined whether it is benefiting to the unit or not if yes then the new strategy should be aligned with that of the old one and if the answer is no then the management should think all together something new for the business organization this is so very obvious that if the current strategy is already doing good and if it is benefiting the company then uh, what new uh, strategy has to do new strategy has just to create an alignment with the existing strategy and can uh, get more benefit out of uh, the strategies new and old right if but if the strategy or existing strategy is such which is not benefiting the company to a greater extent then what should be done then the new strategy or altogether a new fresh strategy uh, should be created and then the say the advantages may be uh, taken up right number 2 comes up is degree of firm's external dependence yes this is also very strong factor uh, most of the companies um, Uh, are uh, are such which gets affected with the external uh, factors right because they depend lot of a uh, lot on the external factors then in such cases what should be done then some businesses are such which are affected more with the external environment considering their product so if so then it should design some strategy which can protect the business from all the external changes affecting the business very very important if your industry is such Uh, which depends highly on the government taxes or the changes in the government taxes or maybe uh, changes in any preferences of the customers or maybe the technologies then at that time such factor should be considered the best uh, because the firm highly depends on the external factors or the success of the firm highly depends on the external factor and at that time if all these factors are considered properly then and then the strategy goes well so that is number 2 the third one is attitude towards the risk see most of the time what happens is management has uh, say uh, the risk they are the risk players right then that is that, that means they are prone to risk they want to take up the risk and they want to uh, say uh, play in the market then that attitude will let more strategies to come up right or else the uh, situation may be other way around so the perception of the management towards the risk plays very important role in the determination of the strategy for the business organization so if the management is risk oriented managers prefers a kind of offensive strategy they like to play with the strategies they like to take up the risk and if the management is a uh, risk disliker that means they do not like the uh, taking risk they will play always a defensive strategy that will protect the current position of the firm right so it is very important uh, to consider the attitude of the um, attitude of the company or management towards taking the risk so whether it is uh, risk prone or whether they are risk dislikers that depends and according to that offensive and defensive strategies can then be adopted so number 4 comes up is managerial priorities different from stakeholders interest yes if the management priorities are are different from that of the stakeholders interest that means those who are, are concerned parties their interest and the management's interest or their priorities are different then they would prefer a strategy through which the business gets some gains by compromising a little for the group of stakeholders then a middle way has to be found out through which all the stakeholders are being benefited and even the company is not at the loss then such a kind of strategy may be adopted fifth one comes up is internal political consideration 
when there is more political consideration in the business unit it will damage the strategic decision because it ultimately affects the business very negatively so either there can be authoritative uh, or autocratic strategy or some flexible policy considering the interest of every member of the unit yes if the pol if the internal environment is too much of political uh, types then it will definitely uh, damage the strategic decisions because whatever the suitable strategies are to be selected they may not be taken Taken up at the right time because of any of the um, political interference or maybe because of the uh, politics being played internally, right? And what happens is uh, either there can be autocratic strategy or there may be some flexible policies, right? And that may be selected or that may be then have to be used uh, it through which every member is getting the considerable interest right so that is about the internal political consideration the sixth and the last one comes up is competitive reaction management also needs to consider this competitive reaction of the competitors towards the strategy because if the reaction is too fast then the strategy will not benefit the business expectedly because if you implement the strategy and the reactions are too fast means even the competitor starts building up their own strategies depending upon yours then the business may not get the benefit uh, as expected and if the following is comparatively less that means if it is not followed that quickly by the uh, firm by the time they uh, reach the strategy they try to understand the strategy and and they try to react that time period can be used by the uh, company right so if it is comparatively less then the strategy formulation will definitely benefit the business expectedly thus these are all such kind of behavioral factors of the management which affects the strategy formulation or maybe the strategic choice that is being made by the uh, by the management and that should be taken into account and only then there should be proper building up of the uh, strategy and implementation should be there which benefits the unit that is how these managerial or maybe the behavioral factors that affects the uh, decision related to strategic choice uh, say uh, i'll repeat one more time it is role of current strategy degree of firm's external dependence third is attitude towards the risk of the management managerial priorities differ from that of the stakeholders right internal political considerations and the sixth and the last one is considered to be the competitors reaction or competitive reaction right so here we are ending up with this uh, behavioral factors also and ending up with the unit also hopefully uh, the unit is quite clear to you right and we have checked almost all the concepts almost uh, it's not almost we have checked all the concepts related to all the uh, units in a um, say in a proper manner so i don't think there should be any issues with you while you are listening to the video lectures please do keep your uh, text also before you so that whatever has been discussed in the uh, video lecture can be then read from the text or whatever is convenient to you whatever the material is convenient to you right and we are not missing any part of the syllabus so here with this today's uh, lecture uh, that is the fifth part of strategic a framework as the fifth unit of your syllabus of bps that is business policy and strategy uh, we are ending up with the unit also we are ending up with your syllabus also right please do keep uh, the video lectures as i said uh, while uh, listening to the video lectures or uh, studying the video lectures please keep your text before you so there is no ambiguity as far as the uh, content and the video lectures content is concerned right uh hope that you are already maintaining the um, uh, at least summary notes with you keep your summary notes ready so that it helps you to uh, revise the things during the examination so uh, this is the end of the uh, chapter also as i said unit also and end of the syllabus also i'll be uh, sending the important questions uh, through uh, the pdf uh, in the app so don't bother say by next week i'll be doing that and you'll be able to see what are the questions that one must be clear or what are those concepts that one must be clear as far as one uh, one to five units are concerned right so uh, that's the end take care of yourselves thank you